you all hear me clearly, right? Yes, sir. All right. Um, so welcome to VRT session. Thanks for joining. Um, I've been thinking about this to do a session on ABAP debugging uh, for functional consultants. So when you know functional, what do you mean functional consultants? So you guys are the functional consultants, right? So we know functionally very well, SAP understands very well. You can configure things. It's not technical. But SAP is built on ABAP. ABAP is an application, business application, whatnot, advanced, whatever it is, programming language, okay? Um, so everything is built in a BAP, uh, your programs, the function modules, uh, function calls, call methods, and the interfaces that, you know, reads the data from different uh, third-party systems, all this built in a BAP. Um, if you know coding, uh, those days are gone, right? So today the coding is usually used by blocks and blocks and blocks of simple, um, to make it really simple, they have small, small programs, subset of programs that you use within a big program. So like, like we have models in SAP, so they also have models, okay? Um, so by end, after the session, I'm really hoping that you guys can, um, will have some knowledge on our interest or motivation to go and you know, dip, 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 dig further into your programming, um, the ABAP codes or statements and whatnot. So that it, it makes really fulfill your uh, career um, that you are able to understand the program a little bit so that you can work with the consultants, I mean, the developers really confidently. That's the whole goal, okay? All right, so first thing is, like I said, every transaction code, so now you know all the transaction codes, right? Most of the transaction codes in financial accounting. Um, can you name some transaction codes in financial accounting? Um, hotel? Yeah, I was asking H. Hema Kumar. Can somebody tell me um, some transaction codes? Yeah. Uh, B03. What's that? FBL3N. Mm -hmm. FBL5N. Five, uh, Mm -hmm. FS double zero. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, that's fine. So, you know, these are the transaction code we use to call the certain functions in SAP, right? So, all these transaction codes are linked to a program, right? So it's, it's, it's like this, right? You go to a ATM machine, you put the card inside. That's a transaction code. Now, what happens in the background? It is gonna call your, the application data, right? It's gonna to connect to your server and pull the information and shows up in your screen, right? So you press the button, you enter, ting, 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 enter, that's your transaction code. Each of them is a transaction code. The transaction code is basically a link between your program, between your command, between your, um, you know, the, the application and you. So you are executing it and then the program works in the background. Now, how do you access the transaction code? It is by that. How do you access the program? It is by the transaction code, okay? Now, all the transaction codes are stored in the table called PSTC, number one. You probably know this already, right? So if I go to transaction code, um, SC16N, what's the table name I said? PSTC. Okay. So use the transaction code, TSTC. This is where all the programs are stored with the direct link to the table. Okay. So let's say some FBL3N, right? Yes. Okay. If you do that. <clears throat> So 
See, this is the program, which is R F I T E M G L. This is the program. Similarly, more all the you can find the program or the transaction code if you know the program name. If you can find the program, if you know the transaction code. So that's what the first step. Now, some of the hidden program, SAP has its own program that you cannot execute by transaction code because those are supposed to be only executed in the background or not by the user. Okay, SAP has this one program which they use to troubleshoot and they are hidden. So they don't have a transaction code. The reason is it's not given to the users, right? It is not given to a licensed user. So sometimes if you go to the TSTC table, you would not find a transaction code, but you'd find a program. Make sense? Yes. Do you agree? Yes. Romeo, do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay. So now we know the importance of TSTC transaction code. Now, once you know the program name, okay? So what you have to do, you will go to SE38. Okay, what is SE38? SE38 is a transaction code where you can execute a program or create a program or you know uh, look at the source code and things like this. Okay, so is it a standard program or a custom program? Yeah, it is a standard yeah. program because it, if you are using a custom program, it should start with the letter Z, mm -hmm. right? Or Y. Z for zebra, Y for yellow. Okay, great. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this and then display the source code. You can execute from here, okay, with a variant or without variant. And then you can actually click, look at the source code here, display, okay? Uh, I really encourage you to do this, everyone. If you know a program, go to AC38, put the program here and display. So the more and more you keep looking at the program, you get a good grip of how it's written, what the program is doing, what is the flow, right? What are the thousand things the program is trying to do? Okay. Come on. Okay, so what do you see here? So we got the program. What are you doing here? We're displaying the program. A BAP editor display report out of ITEMGL, okay? The report is active. Now, if you look at any program, the first thing you will see here, you see the dotted boxes, right? <clears throat> so there you will tell you what the program is doing at a very high level, okay? See, this is a line item report, general ledger accounts, okay? Because of the standard program, you will not see lots of wordings, lots of, uh, if you take a custom program, people will write their own stories, what the program is doing, when did somebody change it, okay? And, and those type of information, they will add it to the, uh, they will keep adding when they change, okay? Now, because this is a custom program, this is a standard program, and it was built by the greatest engineers in ABAP, sorry, in SAP, um, and it's being, you know, revisited several times. It's a bulletproof, so you won't see a lot of change modification or anything here, okay? Now, read this. Report RFIT MGL message ID MSI item, no standard page heading. Okay, what does it mean? Anything you see in the blue color, right? And you see anything you see in the blue colors, right? Okay, you can double click those. It will take you to a separate sub module. It will not sub module, it will, it will, it, it's, it's like a command, okay? If you, for example, include, if you double click, it should take you to the include. Let's do here, RFIT, double click here. So that's an include program. Like I said, a program has a multiple includes, right? If you have a, if you have a SAP program, as a program, the program is built with small, 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 small. Small, small what? United? Includes. United. 
small small sub, sub programs small small programs right so they call it include when they say include right so it said it, along with the meal your tip is included right along with your um something like that along with the program there's a lot of included inclusion each of the include include program has their own responsibilities as it won't function okay they will do something so like i said i just clicked it right now i'm trying to understand um what is inside the program so you have a lot of includes and you click the report so this is the report name okay let's see double click you just keep double click you won't break anything okay just double click uh be confident just move around go back and there and search keep searching and then you'll find um you know lots of information Now, like I said, you keep looking at the program. You will try to understand. You will get to. You become very familiar with this. Okay. So now today, the this is just pretty slow. Any questions so far? Alpha, Bravo. No, sir. No, we are good. No. Lima. So I just click something here. Um, you, you can find where this program is used. Okay, it's not very really useful. Now, let's let's go back in there. Very important thing. Okay, I'm telling you, <clears throat> tables. They call it data declaration. Okay, so they mention all the tables this program is touching. So if you go into the program, if somebody, let's say, very simple, okay, they are asking you to make a modification to the program. Okay, they are asking you to work on the function specification. so you don't know what the program is doing you probably know but you don't know what the table is touching first thing i would do is go to the table as you said like i said you will not break anything just go display the source code look at the tables okay this is very important now i know this table this program is touching all these tables correct okay so what is scat you can look at scat anybody know what scat scat is a gl account master account okay that makes sense right this program which is a gl line items has to touch this has to go into this table maybe to validate to pull the information now skb1 we know skb1 is also a company code master data table bsis is a is a line item table which is the um, i think it stores either cleared or it's a open item table okay and admi files i'm not sure i never heard about this table let's just look at this again ADMI underscore if I leave this. Yeah, this archive files for archive systems. So um, when you run the program, let's say some data is archived, correct? In SAP, there's something called archiving. So FBL is it one n or three n? Three n, correct? So SAP, you get you archive the archive the data the transaction data or master data in sap correct do you know anybody why we archive can somebody tell me why we archive the file archive archive in sap the data mm -hmm. um, not what's that um, i mean the the specific data is too small to refer to you so we we archive mm -hmm. i mean archive Okay, yeah. So it's it's become you don't need to keep the data for too long, right? For auditing purposes, tax purposes. Okay, so you don't need to keep the data in a SAP system because it's so it's it's expensive to keep the data in SAP, right? And maintain the data. So they archive the data. Basically, they take the data out of SAP and then put it in a near line storage. Now, if you want to read those archived information, um, you can click on the data sources. Okay. If you click on the data sources, what will happen? It will show a screen where you can pick whether you want to pick from the database or archive. Okay, so this is why the system has to know whether you are reading this information from a database or archive, right? So this is the file, this is the table, okay, which knows the archive file, where the archive file is stored. for this fbl one line item information okay what's the logical path sorry path um 
So you, you can go and dig into the pile and, you know, um, honestly, this is the only way you learn. I want everybody to learn and become somebody, right? Uh, very strong in your SAP. Um, that's my main goal. I'm, I'm doing this. <coughs> right, Nimi? Nancy, sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So similarly, you can go and look at the table. This is the first hand information I'm telling you. If you go into the program, IC38, look at the data declaration or tables, then you will kind of understand what the program is doing. Mostly you will know by then, okay? By look at the table, you mostly know whether this is a, a bank interface or a banking program or whatnot, right? So that's very important. So what's the table 001 table? It's a company code table, okay? So you don't have, you can just click from here, okay? Uh, you can just, this is ECC. I think S4 has a kind of fancy, um, you know, um, things to do, but that's fine. We we'll stick to the basics. All right. Um, now, so you, as you know, what the program is doing is it has a selection screen, correct? Right? It has a selection screen. Now, data, when they say type with header line, okay? Um, this information, see, it's sending with T001, okay? T001. When the program goes into the table first, okay? First thing is it collects information and put it to the internal table. Anything that says IT stands for internal table, okay? Okay, it's called internal table. And then um, type means is equal to, okay? Data IT underscore is, this is, when they say type, this is something similar to this. This is something similar to this. This is something similar to this, but with the header line, okay? These are not the tables. The tables are here. So these are internal tables because when system gets information, it has to store some information inside the program and then process it further, correct? Yes. Yes, yes bravo. Yes. Correct. So that's what it is. The next thing is, so data. Okay, now we got the tables, now the data. So if you see here, you can say, um, what are the tables it is touching? We already know this. And the next thing is field, right? See, this is the field. SACNAR, SACNAR, these are what? Reconciliation accounts, okay? Like line of GT, SACNAR. Again, um, I'm, I'm, just teach, I'm just showing at high level. Once you get there, you're not going to create a program by yourself. So anywhere it says uh, blue line, you can click here. It will take you to, okay, different screen for further review or further knowledge, okay? Somebody dropped off. Who dropped off? Hotel. Okay, I'm sorry, it's just taking so long. All right, see, it's a transparent table. It goes to, you know what's a transparent table, anybody? I'm sure you guys know. Anybody know what's a transparent table? What's the transparent table, anybody? Uh -huh. So transparent table is just, um, it's just one single table. If you go to contents, right? If you click the contents here, it is like, you just directly take it to SA16 and then you can query the table. There's something called structure, okay? So structure is a cluster of tables. It, com it combines, it, it connects inner joints, outer joints with the multiple table. So you will not be able to query this table. For example, if you go to SKA1, you can, actually put the information. It's like one Excel spreadsheet. It stores all the information in, in rows and columns, okay? Um, but whereas if you see a structure, structure is a cluster of program, you cannot go to AC16 and execute the table, execute the table, that's the difference. So, you know, SACNAR, Bucharest, GHR, fiscal year, which is the, the fiscal year, the Monarch period, um, sorry, uh, period, and then um, YRP, or I'm not sure what it is. So by now, I already know what the table the program is touching and what are the fields is touching. So I have a sense of what the program is doing, okay? Now you see the selection screen, okay? Every program has a selection screen, okay? And then you can double click here 
and it will take you to the selection screen T1, I think somewhere it says T1 here, it's not executing. Um, selection screen, big enough block GL account with frame title, frame title text is uh, when you, this is a selection screen, right? So you know how the selection screen looks like, right? This is a selection screen. So first selection screen is GL account, okay? Okay, the selection screen begin of block GL account. The selection screen starts with the GL account with frame title text. So this is how the graphical user interface, the systems, the selection screen is designed. Now the parameters like RF to do the, to the selection options, um, you know, this all SAP written program, it is kind of, uh, you know, I wish we have a, a Z program that might be easier. Let's see if I can find a Z program. Because the Z program is written by a developer, like, you know, somebody like, you know, in our team, right? All right. So there's a lot of useless programs here. So I'm trying to keep. Okay, so let's do actual items for table. FA consistency check, text program evaluation. Let's look at this guy. Okay, this is stand. This is a this is a custom program. Somebody created this. Some Lumen, nineteen ninety seven. So again, same thing. So this probably would makes more sense. Um, okay, let's look at this. This is a program, okay? And this, this, this is include, let's double click this. And then where does it go? It says global data, okay? This is the include program, um, data declarations. Again, this is going into different, different tables. Um, GLZ1, T881, TR, all these are tables. Okay, double click here, maybe not. It's not taking here, yeah. It will take you to the table and you will know what table is doing. So again, it's a transparent table. List of variants for FI, SL, line item reports. So all the variants are stored in this table, okay? TRW. Okay, and then um, the, here, the next thing is the um, your data type, okay? Um, big enough total TSL. TSL stands for total transaction currency, uh, to, uh, special ledger value, TSL, like t curve, f -cur, um, Again, this is the table. Um, you know, you might be curious, right? What is Ticker? Ticker, anybody know what is Ticker? So Ticker is a foreign currency transaction table. Exchange rates are stored here, okay? And um, when they say like, right? R Ticker like means F core is a field in the program, in the, in the table. TSL is a field in the, in the GLE is one table. So anywhere they say, let's say Ticker, um, I F and F curve, that means this is the table and this is the relevant field name in this. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, so again, uh, like I said, um, first thing is uh, tables, data declaration, then, then includes, then the data again they mention what are the field names here. This is the data tables and the data is, um, what are the field names you are accessing in this program? Great. Uh, let's scroll down here. Uh, this is a simple program, okay? Right. Okay. Now you can ask, um, how do you search for something? So usually what I do is when I go to the program, okay? I will search some function modules. Okay, any the is the program using any function module? So I'll pick up the binoculars. I can select the any anything it's using function model. There is none here. 
and then um, I'll search different different things the program is doing. So mainly the program will contain call method, function model. Uh, if nobody's writing it, I would I would advise you write it down somewhere. They just pretend writing on the test. That's fine. Function module. Um, And then what else? Form, perform, routine, subroutine. And then what else? Um, there's one more. The data declaration, right? So these are the parts of the program, okay? Data declaration, which shows the tables and the fields, okay? And then subroutine, what else? Function model. Um, words so of perform routine form perform routine okay batty right batty and all this stuff so these are the parts of the program so you can search for somebody you want to work on a function model you want to look at um, um, your program is doing something and it's posting it's collecting the information and posting into the into the tables or into a generated flat file whatever it is right it is usually done by a perform Okay, so what I will do, I'll go and search the perform function. So when you have time, take an SAP program, anything that you are familiar with, okay, so to begin with, and then do all this research. Oh, this, I put it on screen. Perform. Okay, I'll search. I know this is a simple program. It may not have everything, okay? But this is how I search. It takes you to somewhere, and then I look at the look at that, and then again, it has a data declaration. It tells you what fields it's using, right? And then I'll make some sense out of this. Okay, any questions? Any questions? What time will finish? Okay. Who wants to know what time we finished? Okay, cool. Um, that's number one. Um, Let's say a very important thing in order to write a functional specification, okay? Um, they might say what field it belongs to. So you know how to find a field name, right? Everybody? What's a simple way? Can somebody answer? I, you should know. How do you find a field name? SAP field name. If somebody gives you. Your voice is not very clear. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, C11. Yes, but how do you know the table name? You don't know the table name, right? F1, you can do like function F1. Mm -hmm. Correct. So if you go here, you press F1. Okay. I just press F1, function key F1. It takes me to here. Then I see here the tools, the technical information. You see a wrench and uh, a hammer on the top. Yeah, two, two. Yeah. Click on that. It will take me to this information. So here, I know now LIFNOR, LIFNOR is the field name for this table, for this vendor name, correct? Okay. So that's how you know. Okay, and then this belongs to table name LFE1. Okay, so all this information are stored in the back end of the table. Okay, and similarly, um, pretty much everything you can do, you will find the field name. Okay, once you know the field name, what do you do next? I mean, obviously, you know what's the table name it belongs to, right? Sometimes, for example, this situation, if you do F1 here, it will show you the structure, F1. It will not show you the table name, but it will show you the structure, I believe, I think. Look here. Mm -hmm. This is also a transparent table. So BSIK is a transparent table. And then what is the field name for the cleared items? 
the sorry the clearing date what's the field name AUGDT. Right. So AUGDT. Okay. Pause. Um, right. And uh, so similarly, that's how you found the thing. Now, let's say once you find the field name, you can find this field name could be used in different, different tables or the programs, right? So I'll go to um, SC84, I believe, once again. Or maybe 83, one second. So I went to SC 83, right? I will go here. Um, this is basically object navigator. You will find lots of information about the, um, um, you know, pretty much on the technical side. Okay, so let's say I go find the table fields. I click on the table fields. If I go there, it will tell me what are the tables, this program, um, this field, what are the tables? What are the programs? This table is being used. Okay. So, what's the field name? AUGDT. Okay. If I execute, it will show me um, this is another thing very useful. Okay. So, you'll find uh, this is all how you develop your problem solving mind. Okay. Or troubleshooting mind. You, you have one information. So, how do you go from there? What do you, what do, you do with this? Right. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's because this field is a very common field. It's probably used in lots of tables, uh, lots of programs. Um, so it will take for a while. So if you execute this, um, this is another way you can find out all the relevancy of the particular field. Okay. Somebody dropped. Yeah, so I'm not going to execute this. Uh, first of all, the system is slow, and then um, it's just taking time. So once you execute this, maybe I just let it run in the background and come back here. Okay. Um, now the next step is how do you um, debug, right? What do you call debugging? So you would not, um, now you know how to look at the program, how to look at the, the data elements and what the program is doing, what tables is touching, how the transaction code is linked, uh, what does the selection screen will look like, right? The selection screen, and then how the, the selection parameters are uh, in the program, right? Uh, what values it can accept and things like this. Um, now let's just do some, so this is a program. 
so when you execute the program right um see there's something called debugging okay you can do this program by debugging with the debugging if you search if you type here otherwise usually if you have a transaction code for example fbl 3n okay if if you let's say if you have the fbl 3n so i think the backslash h okay you use x backslash h when you press backslash h from a transaction code you see debugging switched on you see here anybody yes nobody yes it's called debugging switched on see if you have a transaction code or if you have a program that i see okay this guy came up so the table field we are searching for audt right i search audt when it's executed see it's beautiful right it tells you the audt in different different tables correct BSAS, BSAS, underscore BAK, BSIS, BSIS, we have GAGL, BSS, whatever it is, right? It's used. It's it shows up here. Okay. There are so many tables. This pro, this field, just one field, is being used in several tables. Okay. Now you can also search from here where used. Okay. If you see where used, it will show you. You want to know. Okay. This table is used. i search something for example let's say pay or queue this if i want to know where this information is used right obviously the tables are used in a program correct right? so i'm going to search what are the programs this is being used i execute this here again it's going to take time so what is it, what is the transaction code how did it get here anybody SC ninety three. Is it anybody? SC eighty three. Correct. I think eighty three. Eighty three. Yeah, eighty yeah, three. Okay, so this field AUGDT is used in this table, one of the pay pay or queue table, and then that information is used in this program. Like I said, the program is using a table, right, to do something. So if you go to this program, maybe you can double click. All LFEU two U eleven. It's a, it's it's probably include program. See clear. Ah uh, L underscore F P R Q new A U G D T. Okay, so it's it says clear. What does it mean clear? When you select something, it clears the information. So I select the table now. I select some information from the table, then I clear the parameters, which means I'm not going to use it anymore. So I clear. that's a function that's like this is statements okay small small statements okay so this is very important sc83 okay you can find uh, if you know a field name you can search uh, for troubleshooting what are the tables it stored and the tables used in what programs or interfaces in applications so things like this okay all right so now we come back here again i switch on the debugging okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to put the company code something this is 33 and execute when execute okay see session 4 connected to debugger is connecting to the debugger so about debugger is starting it's pretty easy um for functional consultants right you don't have to debug but it is very important to know if the program is not working correctly or if you know if you want to know what the program is doing outside the expectation or if the program is not um touching some information or extracting some information um based on your understanding or based on the requirement you can basically do this yourself okay now you cannot change the program for sure okay because you know why you are not a developer number one okay so you are not a developer but developers have a key like a key to change the program they need they need a sap key to change the program All right, so I went to the program. Look at this guy here. <clears throat> um, in this screen here, usually there's a desktop one, desktop two, desktop three. Um, I'll go to desktop three. Okay. These are the um, inside the program. Okay, now there's something called stop, create breakpoint. What's called breakpoint? So in order to troubleshoot right you want to do step by step correct correct you want to go step by step what the program is doing so the very important uh, transaction codes are here 
that you should know here. Function key six, function key seven, function key eight, okay? So function key six, F6, F7, F8. So how does it work, okay? If you do F6, F6 goes line by line, okay? It executes line by line, okay? F7 executes by block by block or command by command, okay? F8 means, what is F8? Executes fully, okay? It, it executes fully means to the end of the program. Okay, this is very important thing you should know. All right, so I'm gonna do, uh, this is the starting of the program, okay? I put the cursor here. See, look at this program, they all have a <coughs> command line. Right? Somebody would say, go to the code number, <coughs> go to the <coughs> line number 106. 110, I see this information, you may have to change it. By 112 is where the selection options are here that we need to change it. So this is all helpful to talk to your developer, okay? When you are working on some changes. All right, so here I see include. What is in 123 line item, item number 123, can anybody? Romeo, what do you see in 123? Include. Well, what does it do? What does it do? It includes that particular program. Mm -hmm. It includes that particular program. Like yeah, it includes it. Correct. Right. It is a includes a small section of a program. I, I'm thinking that SEL stands for selection. So this probably a include for the selection screen. Selection something like that. I'm trying to execute. It's not going inside. Okay, because I'm in ABAP debugger mode. No, if I do um, F7, what does F7 do? Step by step, right? See, sorry, F6. If we do F6, F6. two and five, two and five. F6, you know, um, it goes by section by section, 248, F6. See, step by step, right? <clears throat> it goes by step by step, one, one. Now it, it goes step by step, okay? Now I want to know what the program is doing, okay? So um, it is checking some data, it is extracting some data, right? That you can double click and see the information here, for example. Uh, this uh, this is the call function. Okay, let's step back here. Sorry, this is a good program. So perform. I told you that. Right? What's perform? Perform is again another block that does something. Okay. Um, what is called loop? <clears throat> Can somebody know what is called loop? Repeated thing again and again. Correct. Okay. It keeps repeating again and again. Right. Um, in this information, for example. Um, the program is going to select some information, right? It is going to the program, first select the GL account, and then take the GL account and do something, right? Again, it clears information. That's called clear. Then again, take another GL account, go to the table, get the relevant information, and pass to the internal table. Again, it clears information. So it keeps doing the same thing again and again. That's called a loop. Yes, no? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, that's called it is. So, Think about this program is not program is just basically going finding information, extracting it and doing something and passing on to something, correct? That's what it does, right? So it goes in a loop. It takes one data, get the data and clear. Take the data and one data and the clear the selection screen. So that's all it does. Okay, that's called loop. Um, so if you go back here, uh, like I said, I'm doing F5, sorry, F, Six, F7, F8, I'm doing step by step. If I do F7, which I'm doing now, it will take me to, see, to the next command, okay? Next command. So it's already inside the program now. 
is going inside this program function, which is Bucher's authority check. Anybody know what is called Bucher's authority check? Company code authority check. Correct. It is checking if I have an authority, if I have an, if I'm authorized to run for this company code. So all these are inside the program. This is a function module. See here. Okay. This is a function model. It goes step by step. Okay, so it imports of importing my value, which is my user ID, and going and finding the information in the table, and then says I'm authorized or not. Okay, so now I'm going to do this again. F7 function F7 perform RRI underscore INAT. You can click this guy and you will tell you what is this doing. Uh, not right now. I'm in debug mode. Okay, so F7. Okay, clear generic. Clear generic is enabled. Okay, it's almost coming to the end of this. It's going into each of this block. Okay, now it come back to the main program RFA80 in GL. So when you do F7, it goes into each block. Okay, and show you what the program is doing. Now I'm going to again do F7. F7. Okay, it is going to the next function model, function call. Okay, so it already executed, the program already executed from the debugging mode. Okay, now go back again. Okay, do it again. F E L three M. So backslash H, right? I back switched on. Um, I'm gonna put uh, let's put one G a couple of G accounts here. Come on. Okay, right. So it's going back here. Um, Go to, so I want to see how you can look at what the program is doing. Um, fortunately, because there's a standard program, it's going to be really challenging with that. Call function, well, let's do it again. Okay, stop. Let's take this to the account. Okay, I'm going to execute backslash H switch debugging switched on. So I do the execute here. It takes me to the screen. Okay. It is going to this program. Now do F6, sorry, F7. Okay. Step three, the stop three. Okay, so perform resolve workless table GT goes up. If you double click here, see this table is coming here. Okay, so this table is coming. So if you double click here, it will show me all the values of the table. Double click here. So then I know what the program is taking. Okay, uh, this is the information, it is coming from the table. Uh, so this. This here. Okay. This is the table, and what are the whatever information is taken from the table, it will show me here. Again, um, I'm trying to find a table that we are familiar with. Unfortunately, we are not able to find it. Mm. Perform check date tables. Let's see here. STB across table. I will click here. Yeah, so this is another table. It shows the value equal to company code 333 based on the selection screen, okay? 
Um, so you go step by step. <clears throat> you know, you know what the program is doing, whether it's collect, whether it's getting the right information or not, and uh, things like this. Okay, and let's see SKB one B plus. Go here. I bring this here. Then double click. Okay, this is a field, and uh, I don't know what's this, this value. Okay. All right. So we know this function model, call function, because I thought to check. And this function model, you can check either here or using SE. Any function models you can check in using, using SE 37, right? Okay, you can test this function model here. Okay, test SC37, we have test. So function model is basically a part of the program which is helping you to validate something, to extract something, to convert something, okay? Okay. So what you want to import here in order to check authority check, it has to import the user ID, right? Test. Yeah, so um, it has to have more information to check. So, you, you know, if you have a good uh, function model, you can check, go to se 37 and then you can understand what the what is it's importing. If you go back here, the Bucus exporting um, from database is called a yes, tables is this, and then exporting, and it basically tells you, yes, this guy is uh, authorized to execute this program, okay? Um, very important thing, like I said, F6, F7, F8, okay? F6 executes one by one, step by step, and then you double click here, it comes to the right side, and then you can, if it's a table, you can ex, you can see what information is picking up by clicking this contents, okay? And F7 is goes by block by block, okay? And F8 executes completely. Um, one more thing is this, this is a breakpoint. You can create a breakpoint, for example, you want to execute, but you, want, you, don't want to exe you don't want the program to execute fully, you can right click here and then create a breakpoint. What does it mean is <clears throat> when you do that, system will not execute fully. Okay, it will not break point. It will not system will not execute fully. If I you do if I do F8, so F8, it will go and stop there. See the break point is stop there. The reason why this adapters use this is you don't want to execute the program completely. You want to navigate within this certain portion of the program so that you know otherwise it keeps executing, keeps executing, right? You want to troubleshoot, you want to look at the specific portion of the coding, right? So that is why they put a breaking point here. Okay. So far, any questions? It's not a table. Is this is not is the same key code SE16 to view? Very good point. Or it's different. Very good point. Can you repeat the question? I understand the question. Can you repeat again? Oh. My question is, uh, uh, I want to double check uh, if I want to view the fields in the uh, transparent table, um, the transaction code, whether it's a T, it's SE16 or is it different? Sure, um, good point. So let's go back here. Let me stop this guy. Really big point. Okay. Stop. 
you see, says, yeah, here is it. F5 single step, F6 execute, F7 return, and F8 to continue. Very easy, right? This is what you do. Step by step, execute is completely execute, each step, okay? And then return is, because it's in the inside a command, inside it include, so come out of the include, and then continue means all the way to execute, so, okay? So this is what a debugger session I'm gonna uh, delete it, I think. So when I delete it, so all this information is deleted. Oh man, stop the debugger, yes. All right, good point. So the question was, um, yes, SC16 is used um, for, for example, the transparent tables, okay? SC16, and then for the structures, you use SC11, okay? Yes, E11. So SC11, you can play both tables and the structures, okay, tables and structures, but SC11, because you cannot query the table, you go to SC11. Transparent table, you can execute, right? You can find information. But, um, but the structures, you won't be able to, because it's a cluster of tables, okay? SC11 is useful <clears throat> to find all the attributes of each of the fields. Uh, for example, if you go to SKB1, it, it is a master, it's a GL account master data company code. If you see a but if you see this type of thing here, context, it is a transparent table, which means you can query the table. Now it contains all the characteristics and information, um, the, the field name, field length, and everything. Okay, this is also important when you work with the developer. Okay, you want to change the field. Um, first of all, if you know the field name, go to SC83, find the field, what tables it is, and then you can come to a structure or SC16 or SC11 and put the table and then find the information here. Then it tell you this is four characters or five characters, alphanumeric or data. Characters means it's a character, A, B, C, D. That's called character, right? Numeric means it's a numeric. One, two, three, four, five, six, value, quantity, dollars, all this stuff, numeric, okay? This D, A, T, A stands for the date. Okay, this is how they specify the field names. This is the attributes. So SC11 is used for a structure. Good question. Anything else? Suppose when we want to, uh, when we are while we are executing program, suppose uh, when we want to uh, bypass that one um, error, I mean go further on the program. How we we can bypass that error? Um, in the error, see, there's a, the program stops you for an error. There's an error because the system cannot do anything. It needs some information, okay? Um, yeah. if, you exec if you go through the program, prog in, the, in the program itself, right? It will tell you somewhere, okay, if this doesn't, this, this, this statement doesn't match, okay? Display the error message, okay? If these conditions are not met, display the error message. So it will tell you in the system, in the program itself. So you cannot suppress the program, but however, um, you can, um, there's a table called I think T0, I forgot, T100, I think. Your, all the error messages are stored in this table, T100. I think so, okay. Generally what happens is people will go and suppress their messages. If you don't want the message, right? If you don't want the message to uh, drop here or uh, you don't want the error message, right? You want the message to suppressed or warning message, then usually what you can do is um, you T100 contains all the table names, so it's two messages. Then the program you go here is. OBA5, sorry, OBA5. See, change message control, OBA5. Okay, application area, it's FI. For financial accounting, it's usually FI, we use FI or FC. Okay. 
So let's check anything. So in OBA Wi-Fi, OBFI, I mean, usually it's not recommended. Somebody goes and suppress a message or suppress a warning message. Um, here, there's nothing. You can actually create an entry, say that this message number comes from the table T100, okay? Say so clear items. You probably have seen this, right? <clears throat> clear item, okay? If, if anybody executes, okay, in online, in the batch input, Okay, what is supposed to do? This error message is supposed to be a warning or you want to switch off completely, all this you can configure here. For example, when you post, it says a hey, automatic, this GL account can be only allowed for automatic postings. Okay, that's error message, it stops you. So you want to convert that to warning message, you can come and put the message here and then convert it. Okay, so it will not give you an error. Is, is what you're asking for? Solution. Suppose temporary, we want to skip that error. What is it? Uh, if it's an error message, you have to fix it. I don't think you can skip it. Okay. You have to fix why it's an error message. Okay. Okay. Any questions? All right. So, yeah, that's it. Um, this is at a very high level. I'll probably detail for somebody. Go look at it, and then, like I said, I encourage you to go to SE38. Um, you know, look at the program uh, part by part. Uh, you can Google it. Uh, what does it do? There are a lot of statements, right? Then, if you first of all, by just looking at the tables, you know what the program is doing. Now we know how to find the field names and how to find the tables the fields are, and what are the tables? What are the programs this table is using in SE83? And you know the TSTC table. Find the transaction code in the program. And then F site, and then above debugging, F6, F7, F8, and F5. Uh, this can go by step by step, execute, uh, go into statement, includes and everything, and then come out of them. Uh, these are the function that you use. Uh, plus, we saw the error messages, uh, the warning messages, where they come from, how they're configured, how you can suppress them. And then what else? Yeah, we saw the selection screen, how it's configured, how it's uh, the parameters, or what is the loop, what is clear, um, what's the internal table and uh, function model, how do you execute the function model and all this stuff, correct? Yes? Yes. Oh, all right. I ask one more question. I'm not sure if you still have any time. Yeah, please. Go ahead. Yeah, um, 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 uh, if um, for an uh, interface, like for one, um, like for uh, one system, the one, they, they linked with some interface, how I'm able to find the, uh, the source date? <clears throat> How can you find what? Source data? Source da yeah, source data, yeah. Mm, okay, so in, when is the interface, right? You, you so Interface is basically a program that extracts information from one system to another system. Okay, that's a program. If you go look at the program in SE38, that particular program, okay? <clears throat> there'll be includes, performs, routines, all this stuff, right? Statements, data, data declaration, everything. Somewhere inside the program, it will tell you what are the tables this program is touching. It's extracting information from, correct? And then it will also say, so again, you got to search, go to, go to uh, control find, go to the program, find file layout or layout. It will take you somewhere. It will show you what's the file layout it's expecting, okay? And things like this. The source data um, basically just extracting the information and then you know compiling this information, processing the information, and putting in a proper layout. All this program will be doing. Yeah, first step would be you know from the program you can look at what are the tables, data declaration, data types. So then you can make sense of it is taking your financial data, master data, or whatnot, right? That's that's your first uh, step. Did I answer your question or? But, but, but what if I only know the interface name? So I'm how I'm going to find out the program. So the no, linkage the, be, between the link uh, the, the the interface name and the program program name. How I'm, I'm going to link to? There's no interface name. Okay, <clears throat> it's if people call in different companies. They have interface ID one two three four four five six seven. Okay, that's outside SAP. In SAP, there's nothing called interface ID. It's all documented. It's easy to prefer, right? And it's a number plate on my car, correct? 
right? The number plate itself doesn't do anything, correct? If you ask me, if you give me a number plate and tell me what cylinder, how many cylinders it is, what's the engine size, I wouldn't know, correct? So the number plate is attached, tagged to your car, your engine, so uh, tagged to your car. If you know, if you tell me the car, then I can tell you, um, we can open the trunk and see what this is doing. I mean, what type of engine and you know um, cylinders and how does it run and things like this. So interface ID, name of the interface is basically uh, ID because the program names are long. Nobody's going to remember the program name, right? Backslash, AMS, backslash, you know, whatnot, right? Do you think you can remember the program name or no? Interface name, no, right? So they have interface ID. Thus could be documented somewhere. I do not know how in your client they manage it somewhere. But once you know the program, which is starts with Z, because of the custom, then you can go to AC38. That's your program, right? Was it help, helpful? Are any other questions, sir? <coughs> No. Uh, user exits, where can we see? See, user exits are um, it's another topic. Um, yeah, it's not it's not part of today. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can we can look at it sometime later. Okay. Anything else? Uh, it's twelve o'clock my time here. Anyways, uh, thank you for joining and um, um, we'll meet uh, you know, in the next session. Hope you enjoy. Um, I'll share the recording. Uh, it will be uploaded in Udemy as well. I hope you will uh, make this up. But the first thing is, you know, start today. Go to AC38, you know, review this, okay? Sure. Thank you, Rajesh.